All right, everybody. Welcome to episode 179 of Psycho's Platters. Um, we're, we're finally just getting back to basics. Um, well, before I start, uh, I found out this afternoon that uh, Greg Allman passed away. Uh, Greg Allman, rest in peace. Uh, you know, I... Okay. Oh, God. All right. You know what? Psycho's going to go off here. Paul's going to go off here and, and tell you a true story. Um, and I know my son eventually will probably watch this tape, maybe either if I'm alive or dead, and find out that I mentioned this story. Uh, but I don't care. <laughs> it's a true story. The only chance that I had a chance to see the Allman Brothers, I was this close, this close. I just tease him. I tease him. I really don't blame him entirely. <laughs> uh, the Allman Brothers came down to Fayetteville, Arkansas. It was either in, I think it was, oh God, was it 2010? It was either it was either 2008 or 2010. I'm sorry, guys, because I remember ZZ Top played in 09 at Bud Walton Arena. And, uh, and, um, not Bud Walton. Was it Bud Walton Arena? We're going to go with Bud Walton Arena. Um, I, something tells me that's not it, but it was Fayetteville, Arkansas, okay? And, uh, well, they were down here for Bikes, Blues, and Barbecue. It was a big thing, okay? Uh, for a few years, we had some big-name bands that came down just for this in September. They would always come down in September. And the Allman Brothers came one year, and I'm not kidding you, I went and got tickets. In fact, I won them. I won a pair of tickets. I always was good at that stuff back then, winning pairs of tickets. So I said, you know what? I I don't like going to concerts by myself. I can do it. I just don't like doing it that often. So I took my son, John. Now, the funny part about it is, is that as soon as I mentioned about the Allman Brothers, he actually got half excited. Then I found out why. Because <laughs> uh, he used to play rock band. And I think Jessica... The song Jessica's in there. Uh, maybe there's other songs. So I'm like, okay, fine. So me and him, I told him, I said, you've never been with me to a concert before? Well, I take that back. He was at one concert years ago before. But I'm like, we get there early because this is one of those kind that you, it's standing room, okay? There's no seats. So first come, first serve. And, uh, yeah, so, I mean, I'm not kidding you. We were first in line to get in. I am so serious. And um, so I went off and I said, okay. And um, I went off and I told my son to go slightly ahead of me in a half run to get right dead center stage. We were going to be at the lip of the stage. He tripped over a cable of some sort, something to do with the audio, whatever. Tripped over an audio cable, let's say. And uh, he jammed his thumb. I'm like going, oh, no. And I wasn't sure what the degree of it was. I'm, I'm not lying. I said, "How? you know, are you hurting? What's going on here, you know? So I went off and I quickly got uh, some ice from the concession people. They were happy enough to give us a give us a bag of ice to try to put it on his thumb, but it wasn't getting any better. So believe it or not, yeah, I had to leave. I had to leave with him, and uh, and uh, we were gonna take him to the ER in town. And uh, before we left, though, I know this sounds really weird, but I said. I'm at least getting us a shirt to prove I was here. <laughs> and I got him a shirt, and I got me a shirt, and we ran. And we, we, we left the venue. And, uh, well, I know he felt bad about it. I It wasn't entirely his fault. It wasn't. Stupid place for an audio cable. But that's my, that's my Allman Brothers story. <laughs> uh, after that, Greg, uh, if I remember correctly... In the last two years, scheduled to do concerts in Springfield, Missouri, which is kind of a hop, skip, and a jump from where I live here. And both times they had to be canceled due to 
his ongoing health issues. So I'm like, oops, well, that's, that's my Greg Allman story. So you know what I'm going to ask you in the comments, put, put in the comments below, was there an instance where something similar like that happened to you? You were so happy to go see a performance and then something bad happened or something unfortunate happened uh, or something close to that. I like stories. Throw me, throw me in the comments here, okay? So, these albums that I'm going to show you are all albums that... I've got so much backlog, this isn't even funny. These are the albums that I ended up finding at a Goodwill, one Goodwill, over on Record Store Day. Yeah, because I was... the weather was bad, I wasn't feeling entirely well, I was not going to fight the huge lines for the one store that was 45 minutes away. I just wasn't going to do it. So, I didn't get bummed out entirely. So I found these instead. So I'll tell you what I got here. First one here, from 1980, Roger Powell uh, from Utopia and the album Air Pocket. Uh, it, from, it, was his, it was his second solo album. Uh, Rundgren, Todd Rundgren, of course, does play on one song. He does an Ebo solo on the song Morning Chorus off the of side, too. This album actually made it to the Billboard charts, the pop charts, at number 203 back in 80. Uh, of course, this is going to be on Bearsville. The condition on most of these albums, very nice. Um... I think the I think the only albums that weren't in near mint, I'll get to that in a second. So Roger Powell, Air Pocket, front and back on Bearsville. The next one I got going here. I like Elvin Bishop. I have liked Elvin Bishop even before Fooled Around and Fell in Love. I know that's the only song that they're known for mostly, right? On the radio? Oh, no, 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 no. You need to get into other stuff like Strutting My Stuff and a bunch of other ones. I played a couple cuts off of, off of this album here off of Hog Heaven from 1978. Elvin Bishop, of course, started out in the Paul Butterfield Blues Band. Oh, man, oh, man. Somewhere in my record collection, I do happen to have original presses of those Butterfield Blues Band albums. And I am so glad I got them. Um... Very cool mid-60s, what, what, what I'll call white blues, all right? They really are. They captured the field of that very well. Uh, so he stayed in with the, with the Butterfield Band until uh, 1968, where then he ended up meeting Mike Bloomfield and Al Cooper, and, of course, had that album that they did uh, in 68. He also happened to sit, he sat in, with the Grateful Dead. Yeah, at Fillmore West, June 8, 1969. Uh, which I thought was kind of cool. Uh, the last album, though, that he did was in 2009. This is the front. This is the back. Of course, this is going to be on one of my favorite labels, Capricorn. Yes, beautiful condition Capricorn here. Some of the uh, some of the musicians that happen to be on here, Scott Matthews plays drums. Now, what a story on this dude. I, if you've got a minute or two, go look it up. I think you'll be very surprised. I never heard of Scott Matthews until I dug around here, but he started out with Bishop in 70. And, and get this, in around 71, 72, he met a guy by the name of Steve Perry. Yeah, that's Steve Perry. And Steve Perry and Scott Matthew um, and a handful of other musicians actually formed a band called Ice. All right? And um, if I think I remember somewhere that a track ended up landing on as a bonus track for one of the Steve Perry solo albums. I'm not sure. But uh, for about a good six to nine months, they pretty much tried to get a deal all cut. Um, they, worked, they worked at night in the same studio that Stevie Wonder was recording his Talking Book album. Stevie was listening. In fact, he got a kick out of Scott's drumming. A lot of people got a kick out of Scott's drumming. And Stevie went off and asked Scott, he goes, Hey, can I borrow your drum set? Because the feel of, the, of this song in my head that I want to do would be perfect. That song happened to be Superstition. So yeah, Stevie Wonder uses Scott Matthew from Elvin Bishop slash Steve Perry 
um, the drum kit on Superstition. So I thought that was kind of awesome. Uh, in 81, he, uh, he uh, happened to have Beach Boys involvement. That's another little chapter in itself, too. Like I said, go look under Scott Matthews, drummer, or Scott Matthews, musician. There's a lot of stuff on this guy. Also, Amos Garrett. Amos Garrett's on here for plays guitar. He uh, started out with Maria Moldier, uh, worked with Jerry Garcia and other people, and uh, Melvin Seals. Melvin Seals was with the Jerry Garcia band. And once in a while, Melvin Seals will perform down here, too. I've been meaning to catch him, but it's been at least a good couple of years. So, Hog Heaven from Elvin Bishop. Yes. Wrote everything. All right. These next pair. Very cool. I have not found quad albums since the briefcase find. Remember the briefcase find from about a year or two ago? If not, go dig around. Look under briefcase find. LP briefcase find. I found some quads back then. Well, this time I managed to find two quads. I actually found more quads, but these were the best condition. These two, I would say, are at least in VG, all right? But from June of 74, Holiday from America, yeah, this is the front, base back here. Let me show you the label. It is on the Warner Palm, but it does have the quad designation on it. I think that's kind of cool. Um, basically, with this album here, the two hits off of her Tin Man, number four on the Billboard, number one on Adult Contemporary Chart, Lonely People, another one of my favorites, number five on the Billboard, but number one on Adult Contemporary. George Martin, yeah, that's right, Beatles and other producer George Martin produced this, and Jeff Emmerich, who was engineer also for the Beatles, also happened to engineer on this one. You know what, truthfully, this is actually one of my favorite albums from these guys. I always liked America. I had a soft spot for them, especially when they were a trio. Dan Peake, rest in peace. But, uh, you know, even when they were a duo, I liked some of the stuff, too. But to find this in quad was kind of awesome. Um, the second one I found in quad, you ask? Seals and Cross Diamond Girl. Yeah, I found Seals and Cross Diamond Girl. This one here is a gatefold. Hang on, I'll show you. But... Like I said, I wouldn't have caught it if it wasn't for the quad designation on this one, too. Um, this one came from April of 73. Once again, it's, uh, I don't know if you could see it, but the quad designation on the label and Warner Palm label. Uh, number four on the Billboard chart, uh, on the Billboard U.S. Albums chart, excuse me, Diamond Girl was the hit off of here. Number six on the Billboard Hot 100. And uh, We May Never Pass This Way Again was number 21. Missed it by that much on the top 20. Actually went to number 33 in Canada. Now some of the people that are on this album, England Dan and John Ford Coley actually do background vocals. I, you know, sometimes I, to me they're interchangeable, right? I, I, maybe I'm wrong on this, but it, to me it kind of feels that way. Uh, of course, Seals and Crofts were bo both started out pretty much uh, being members of the Champs. Yeah, that band, Tequila. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, so it's kind of funny that they got England Dan and John Ford Coley doing backgrounds on this. Jeff Percaro from Toto, he does some drumming on here. So does Jim Gordon, uh, session drummer extraordinaire. Louis Shelton does some guitar work. And why do I know Louis Shelton? Monkeys. Yeah, last train to Clarksville and Valerie. He did. He's the one that does the wonderful guitar parts on that. And uh, lastly, um, oh boy. I can't even read my writing. Harvey Mason, uh, jazz ex jazz drummer extraordinaire. Uh, so this is kind of nice to have this. Like I said, uh, just in quad though. The other quad album that was so screwed up, I felt real bad about. Um, Flavors from the Guess Who. There, it, it just was one <coughs> one side was all scratched up. All right, I can add this to the signed album collection. I found a signed Crystal Gale. I think this is cool. Uh, of course, this one, We Must Believe in Magic. This one came out in June of 77. This is the front. This is the back. You know, I, I always thought she was kind of cute, to tell you the honest truth, back then. This went number two on the Billboard Country Albums, number 12 on the Billboard Album Charts in general. So it says, Love Crystal Gale. Real nice to have that in the collection. Lastly, for this, for this show, 
I've never seen this before. I'm a Genesis fan, and I've got a bunch of the early 70s stuff. I don't have any of the 60s stuff. They didn't make much in the 60s, but saying that, it's nice to have the best of Genesis. This is a double record set. Came out in 1976. Um, Buddha Records with GRT connection. It's kind of strange. It is this label, of course, the typical Buddha label. Beautiful condition on these things. A little bit of dust, maybe a fingerprint. Other than that, it's in mint condition. I'll show you. This is a gatefold, but pretty much it just tells the story, and you got some some uh, newspaper articles. This is the back of this. Um, the album cover in parts is slightly textured, which is really nice. But basically what this was, was I don't understand. I mean, yeah, I know Genesis was getting obviously more popular in 76 than they were in the early 70s. But this two record set pretty much comprised of all a nursery crime from 1971, which of course was the first album to introduce Steve Hackett and Phil Collins into the world of Genesis. And then the following album after that from 1972, Foxtrot. So you have both of them in one package. Uh, like I said, I think it's kind of neat. I've, out of all the years that I, I, you know, this is the first time I've come across this. All of these, by the way, buck a piece at Goodwill. That's what they were. Could not could not pass that up. Uh, Alright, so let's see. Uh, if you haven't seen my 400 sub video, please go check that out. I did that last week. I show a bunch of music books. I do have some other stuff that I didn't show that I'll probably save for a future episode. I, uh, I have two new subs since the last time here that I mentioned. Vinyl Box Trigger. Uh, kind of a newbie. I really kind of, I've seen a couple of his videos. I really like him. Go subscribe to his channel, and I, ho I hope I don't butcher this, Tony. Tony mm, Guag mm, Guagliardo. Uh, it's G U A G L I A R D O. Uh, please, please don't get mad at me, Tony. All right, those two. Thank you very much for uh, joining the Psychos Platters Forum here. Uh, of course, you know I promise to entertain and educate and. Once in a while, act like a stupid ass when it comes to records. But it's okay, I like that. One last thing I want to mention to you. This is a new announcement, so to speak. Any of the YouTube viewers, I'll mention this between now and July 15th. Any of the YouTube VC members that live near Tulsa, Oklahoma... Tulsa is about a two-hour drive for me, okay? Myself and a couple other friends may have another VC member with me on the trip. There is going to be a record show July 15th in Tulsa, Oklahoma at a comic book store. Kind of strange. I don't get it, but I don't care. I saw it on Facebook, and that's the reason why I'm going. So July 15th from 10 a.m. to 4 p. So it's it's only going to be for a few hours. On It's a Saturday. Uh, the record show in Tulsa, Oklahoma, will be at Mammoth Comics. Mammoth Comics. Um, just, just look under uh, Tulsa Record Show or something like that. Uh, Your Mighty Psycho, 90% I will be there. I will be there. If you live around there, come and visit. Come and see me. I think we'll all have ourselves a great time. Maybe we can uh, take a few pictures and shoot a video or something together. I plan on shooting video that day uh, at the Tulsa Record Show July 15th for one and all. So once again, sorry to be redundant, July 15th, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Record Show, Mammoth Comics. Uh, I didn't write the address down, but you know what? I think they have a website, so go check that out. And uh, maybe I'll have more information over the next couple episodes. We got six weeks, pretty much. All right, so that's it for this one, kids. Next one I'm going to do, uh, it's, it, it's going to either be another LP Fine video, or may I review the new Sgt. Pepper remix? Oh, that's a possibility. You guys take care. God bless. Rock on. And I'll see you next time.